In 2023, a bunch of large YouTube creators announced that they were going to be leaving YouTube or stepping down or doing something different. But one of the things that kind of shocked everybody was when Matt Pat of the Game Theorist came out in January of 2024 and mentioned that he was going to be stepping down from his theorist brand, going on to do something else. Now, in that video, which got quite a number of views, he laid out a few reasons for why he was going to leave. However, I have a different theory, and I think it has to do with a video he released just two weeks prior. So if you guys like what I am doing here, please do me a favor, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and ring the notification bell for me. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, Matt, Pat, the guy who built the game theorist, the film theorist, style theory, and food theory, all four of these channels are absolutely massive. The guy who basically helped produce and helped coach so many YouTube channels into success is walking away from it. And to be perfectly honest, I think it's because of this video he did right here. YouTube shorts are gonna kill YouTube and your favorite creators are likely going down with it. Now, if you guys haven't seen that video, I will leave the link down in the description below. But basically, Shorts came out on YouTube with a thud, a clamoring thud, a thud that was not heard by really anybody. Because, well, YouTube is a very different platform, as he goes on to explain. I also find it a little bit coincidental that he does this video just two weeks before he announces his retirement, in which he actually mentioned in the YouTube Shorts are bad uh, video that he already had the idea planned for his couch video for January. So all of that being said, in January of 2023, YouTube basically said, if you don't do shorts, your channel won't grow. You're no longer going to be able to gain views because you need to play the game that we want to because we want to compete with TikTok. And Matt Pat gives a very, very good argument to why YouTube shouldn't be trying to compete with TikTok because the platforms function radically differently. TikTok being a passive watch experience where YouTube being an active watch experience. This kind of has me worried and it should have a lot of other small YouTube channels like mine worried because we looked up to a lot of these guys. We looked up to these channels that had millions of subscribers. They were doing the quote unquote dream job. But you hear a lot of these guys talk about burnout, the constant churn, the need to do things, the omnipresent algorithm, as it were. And all of that contextualize into something that basically says your YouTube channel isn't actually yours. You won't gain views unless you do what the boss says, and the boss is YouTube. The boss are the people who are controlling that algorithm, and the boss is going to tell you to do things that might be antithetical to your channel and the growth of your channel. So one has to ask, is YouTube actively doing things that are going to harm a lot of creators and their sources of income and the ability for them to grow? And I honestly think with YouTube Shorts, the answer is yes. Now, I've only ever tried a couple of shorts on the channel. One, because they were just fun and it was fun to do them. I generally don't like shorts as a medium. I never really have. I do like longer form videos myself, but I went in and I actually compared a few uh, videos, a short that I put up that gained about a thousand views and a video that I put up that gained about a thousand views. And I, I saw the difference in watch time and it was staggering. And I also saw the difference in the amount of ad revenue that was made. Now, the difference here is unbelievable. YouTube decided to tell people they were not allowed to grow their channels or gain subscribers through other methods by doing live streams or anything like that, or even gain views if they didn't spend time doing shorts. And what shorts did is it actively lowered the watch time on YouTube, which then lowers the ad revenue. And in addition to that, introduced a passive experience, right? I'm sure you guys have all heard the idea of dating apps where you swipe right or left to hit yes or no on somebody. Well, that's basically what they did. They took the passive dating experience from all of the various different things out there, from all the different dating sites out there, and put it on YouTube. So now it disincentivizes people from getting to know the creator, getting to actually build a community with that creator. Basically, it's just like, oh, that was a funny video, swipe. Oh, that was a funny video, next. Oh, that was a funny video, next. 
There is no active thing. Usually on YouTube, for a lo for the longest time, it was, I liked this video, I want to find more videos like it, and it asked the viewer to go out and search out the things that they liked in order to stay engaged. And what this it eventually did with all of the YouTube's rules changing is it put a lot on the creators. YouTube eventually built an algorithm that basically said you have to be on the constant churn. You have to be constantly turning out videos, constantly having good quality, constantly knowing what thumbnails and what titles to put out. And it basically turns into an 18 hour workday for a ton of people. And a lot of people who think that YouTube is gonna be the day job and it's gonna uh, change everything. You've heard YouTubers who are stepping down say, although this is the dream job being on YouTube, it's actually still a job. And what they mean by that is that you still have to work so hard to maintain relevance on this platform, to grow your platform, to reach new audiences. And if you are not tapped in and you do not know and don't have the time to pay attention to all of the things surrounding this particular profile that YouTube has set up for you, you just won't grow. And now they added shorts into the mix. Another, yet another different video type that you have to create in order to get out there. So ladies and gentlemen, not only do I think that shorts as a medium are just not good, it would seem that MatPat actually agrees. At least they're not good on YouTube. It would seem that a lot of other creators who have talked about this, I've watched plenty of other creators talk about how shorts are just meaningless on their channels. They really don't bring in subscribers that watch the rest of their videos, that watch their live streams. There's no, there's no viewer that goes from shorts to you know long form video, which is like five minutes plus, to live streams. That bridge does not exist to get people from going from the shorts that you create to everything else. So you might be able to go subscribers, but your watch time will reduce dramatically. And in order to get that watch time back up, you now have to produce at a higher level or hope or hope that you just hit the algorithm. And I think Matt Pat, who's been on YouTube for 13 years, recognize that that churn and answering to that boss at that level and knowing that every six months to a year, they're just gonna change the rules. They're just going to adjust the thing and not knowing whether or not the change that they make is going to help you and your family survive or your company survive is a terrifying thing. And I think that that stress right there, answering to the YouTube boss, is what's driving away so many of these large creators. So ladies and gentlemen, I have this simple question to ask, what does this mean for small creators who would like to do this as their job? More than just a hobby. What does this mean for the future of YouTube? And what are we looking at in 2024? So with all of those questions asked, don't forget to comment down below because I have a special live stream every Sunday where I read all of your comments. And this is something that I've been wanting to talk about for quite a long time. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for watching. And as always, until next time, cheers, everybody.